It's day seven without heating in Marjorie's home. It is cold in here, it isn't it? It really is. Very cold. Yes. Outside, the temperature is below freezing. Inside, it feels just the same. All I've got is that uh, microwave to cook in. I can't do things what I normally do. I can't go in the shower. I can't do anything. It is terrible. I've never known anything like it. So I'm meant to be freezing like this. I'm meant to be shivering now. But, it's, oh dear. You just don't know what to do, you know. I mean, I I've got clothes on enough for two. Hers is one of 2,000 homes in Sheffield cut off from gas supplies. A burst water pipe meant hundreds of thousands of litres entered the gas mains and caused widespread disruption. Oh, my God. A major incident was declared as those responsible tried to keep people safe from the cold. There potentially could be a worst-case scenario here. How does that make you feel that we could potentially go down that road? That risk is precisely why we've declared a major incident and why we're doing everything we can to make sure that that isn't the case. So heaters are out there. We've made sure that vulnerable residents have access to blankets and to, um, to, to thermals. As we face this cold snap, it's clear these people in Sheffield will be amongst the worst affected in the country. But up and down the UK, many people face hiked energy bills and could struggle to heat their homes. And it's the impact on health which is a major concern. It's those on the lowest income that will likely suffer this winter. But with temperatures expected to stay below freezing for a week in many areas, the government is issuing an additional £25 cold winter payment to those who need it most. Charities on the ground say it isn't enough. We know that lots of families are making big sacrifices at the moment and for some families there just isn't enough money to make ends meet. They haven't got enough money to buy the food that they need, buy the clothes that they and their kids need and have the heating on. The advice from health bosses is to keep rooms heated above 18 degrees. For many, that will be near impossible particularly as the sun sets, the cold bites, and this Arctic blast we're facing is making a tough winter even... That's going to affect our gas prices. Yeah, let, me, let me run through it, because there's, there's quite a lot that's obviously mm. happened in the last few months with gas prices. They, they, they've been obviously very high uh, for us consumers, but the wholesale markets, which is where that's affected, well, those prices have been yo-yoing quite a lot. And if I just show you what's going on there, we can probably kind of just about make it out here... This, this is the higher, this is obviously the higher, the wholesale prices. So this is what your, your energy company is paying for, for those prices. And what I want you to focus on is that recently, look, that line has gone up and up and up. And so that is, that's essentially kind of winter. You know, that's a bit of the winter pressure starting to come through here, aside from, from everything else. And if we just take a step back and kind of remind ourselves of what's going on here we get a sense of why this is happening. And the thing to remember here is that, obviously, the UK's there, I'll put it in red, but we are really part of the European market when it comes to, to gas. And why is that? It's because if we zoom in, there are these interconnectors connecting the UK and the rest of Europe uh, where we get a lot of our gas from. And that really matters because when you look at kind of where that European gas has actually come from, well, here is, this is a kind of bar representing all of Europe's gas coming in recently. That was last year, okay? And if I break it down, you get a sense of where the issue here is, okay? So you've got, for instance, I'll kind of take that bar and show you. That's, that's production. So that's basically gas that's coming out of the North Sea, gas coming out of uh, the Netherlands uh, there. You've got Norway, like a lot of the gas at the moment that we're getting in Europe uh, comes from Norway, we split that out there. And then, really, the big one, Russia. Mm. And that's the real question mark here, OK? If we take that bar there, so that's part of the constituent parts, this is where Europe gets its gas from, including the UK at the moment. What about Russia? Because when you look at that total of gas, like I say, this is last year, this is the total... You basically have to delete that or kind of assume, what are you going to do without mm -hmm. Russian gas? And actually, so much of the story that we are going through right now as a nation in the UK and across in Europe as well is about that gap. You know, how do we make that good? Because so much of our lives depend on that and also businesses as well. So, so that is the story kind of last year. And then if we roll on to kind of where we are now, so here's where we are just in the last few months. Russia, still there, but you saw it was really big before. Now it's, it's down. It's tiny proportion. It's tiny. It's, it's about kind of 8 billion. It's down by uh, 81%. Um, the interesting thing that's got bigger 
is LNG. What's LNG? It's liquefied natural gas. And that basically is the gas that comes in on ships, OK? So you've got all of these different kind of terminals around Europe. And what you can probably make out is quite a lot of them are there in the UK. And the upshot of that is a lot of gas comes over uh, from overseas. And recently we've heard that the US is hoping to send more to, to us. Mm. We put, pass it through the UK and then it goes through those pipes I was showing you a second ago into Europe. So that's helped to kind of push up the amount of gas LNG coming into the continent. But the big thing really here is this total demand. Remember that was up at about 85 before. That's gone down. So we are consuming less gas across Europe in recent months. But why is that? It comes back to what you were saying a second ago. It comes back to the fact that it hasn't really been that cold in recent months. You know, if you look, this is the kind of showing you the max and the min, the, the, the range of temperatures over the last kind of decade and a half uh, or couple of decades. And where we are this year, look at that red line. It's quite close to the maximum. So we just haven't been having the heating on as much mm. in recent months. But of course, now we've all noticed it. It's very cold in the last few days. And the question is what happens next? And if we get down there, then we have to turn the heating on a bit more. Uh, businesses potentially have to consume more. The other thing, by the way, that, that, that is worth noting here, because it comes into the UK mm. story, is across in Europe, They've been pumping a lot of their gas into storage. So they've got all of these storage places, old salt caverns, uh, old gas fields. You put the gas in there and then hopefully you can use it when, you know, God forbid something happens to, to Russian gas coming across from Ukraine, which it might well do. But look where the UK is. It has much less storage than most other countries in Europe. Look, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, those are the big ones. So they have all the storage. We don't have much storage, which begs the question of, you know, what happens if get, things get really cold in winter? And the answer to that, this is where things get a little bit kind of, you know, nerve wracking. Because back in the past, what this is showing you is basically, this is gas going out of the UK to Europe, anything above the line. Anything below the line is stuff coming into the UK mm -hmm. from Europe. And you can see, when it's winter, gas comes from Europe to the UK. When it's summer, gas goes out of the UK into Europe. But recently, we've had record exports. And here's the really big question, no one knows What's going to happen in the next few months if it gets really cold? Can we still rely on those inflows coming across from Europe? All of which is why, kind of long story short, it, it comes back to whether there's going to be gas that's going to flow from those interconnectors into, Euro uh, into the UK from Europe. And here's the final chart. Sorry, I know there's been loads of charts here, but this is kind of, you know, the big story. And it's a bit of a recap because we haven't done this for a while. That's the UK gas price, OK? I'm going to show you the European gas price. In the last few months, the European gas price for day ahead delivery has been higher than the UK mm. because we've had all that liquefied natural gas coming yeah. in. Now, those two lines are converging and we could, over the next few months, potentially see the UK price going high while the European one stays low because they have all that storage. Mm. And so it's one of those moments, I think that's why it's worth talking about today. It's not just about temperature, although this is affected by yeah. temperature. It's about the fact that no one's entirely sure how this market's going to function over the course of the next few months, which of course raises questions about what's going to happen to gas prices. We've got the cap at the moment, mm. but what happens to those wholesale prices and then what happens to gas prices afterwards? So it's quite a kind of nervy moment for everyone. Yeah, nervy moment as, as you said, we enter into that cold snap that could... Afterwards, so it's quite a kind of nervy moment for everyone. Yeah, nervy moment as, as you said, we enter into that cold snap that could last for the next uh, few weeks, potentially into January. Ed, thank you very much. Ed Conway uh, bringing the wider picture uh, to that story for us this afternoon. Thank you.